that thing is awesome because even after you open it, that becomes like uh, something you can use over and over again. Like the this package. case? Yeah. Yeah. It's freaking awesome. I'm going to cover the outside of my house in this material. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember moving it. My house is going to look stroke. like a werewolf. <laughs> You don't remember Stroke the Furry Walls from Get Him to the Greek? <laughs> oh, I don't. When the world hands you a Jeffrey, Stroke the Furry Wall, <laughs> the Furry Wall. Josh Norman. Let's talk about the intriguing, isn't it? Josh Norman. Josh flipping 31 years old, gonna save Washington a ton of cash. Oh yeah, that was a bad contract, man. I get why people did it. McDermott's defense makes D-backs look really good. His defense makes defensive backs look great. Now, right? does he strengthen your defense? Well, it's Frazier's defense, but, I mean, <laughs> makes them look really good. There, there's something about the way that Frazier and McDermott communicate that make the defensive backs simply more effective well, they, that's, in that's, Frazier's defense. That's their background. Yeah. That's Frazier's background, having played defensive back. McDermott played defensive back. McDermott coached defensive backs when he first came in. Yeah. So that's, that's where... Communication is paramount on the back end for McDermott and Frazier. So, bringing a guy in like Norman raises a couple of questions. The first being, is it 100% Frazier's defense? Okay. Uh, what does he offer you at 31? You do. I, you, what do you sign him to? A three-year deal for 30 million dollars? I mean, you could trade. You could trade for him right now. You, yes, you, you could, could trade for him with Washington. You, they'd be happy to get. They'd be happy to get rid of him. What are you giving up though? Because I think. Oh, you're giving I nothing. I can't remember the. the you give him a fifth round pick, a sixth round pick. You're taking that. There's not many teams that can take that much salary for a 31 year old player. It's killing me because I can't remember the cap number hmm. for Washington. I think it's 24. Or not a lot. It's not a lot. Yeah. They so need to, they need to clean some money. If they cut Norman or get rid of him at some capacity. Um, over the next two years, they save around $23, $24 million. Right. Yeah, it's going to cost them, what, six? I six think. this year. Yeah, it's going to cost them six this year to cut them or trade them. doesn't matter. They can get it. I think... And like... like uh, You, get, like you just get said. value for them. Yeah. You know? With the dead cap number that Josh Norman has, they could take $6 million on the chin because they're going to save, what, 10 or 12 on the back end? Yes. Just this season. So it's something that they're likely going to do. However, here's... Here's my question to you. It's Norman very... was primarily a zone cover corner. Okay. He was great at it. Yeah. Great zone cover corner. Okay. What were we asking Levi Wallace to do? Because Man. I'm right. Yeah. So from a schematic standpoint, is there a fit? Because you're you have Trey playing man. Okay. You asked Levi Wallace to primarily play man on the outside. So and and truth. You know, truthfully speaking, that's probably one of the reasons why you're able to bring in... What? I'm waiting. Okay. One of the reasons you're able to plug and play the players that you were on the outside is because in college, these guys are primarily playing man. Yeah. They don't really play zone you, You're, you're a better athlete than they are. We're going to play man up. Right. So, my question is, how much of a fit really is Josh Norman? Because you're, you're not playing man up. You're not playing zone on the outside. And McDermott did a ton of zone in Carolina, but you're not asking him to do that. Okay couple things. Mario Addison, Charles Johnson, Julius Peppers, Starla Tulele, Coney Ely was the front that he had in Carolina. The four-man front that could generate pass rush. Right? Even though they didn't get a lot of sacks, they generated pass rush. What does that mean? You weren't blitzing. The reason why you see a lot of man for the Buffalo Bills is because they're blitzing because they're not generating pressure with the front four. Okay, You move Milano to the middle, put Edmonds on the outside, now you're only rushing five. You could generate pressure and still play zone behind that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You could do that with five cover. That will run a five-man yeah, five pass. Right? Yes, that will give you the option to do that. Now, the reason why the Bills were putting Wallace on an island and White on an island, I believe 
for two reasons. One, they wanted to see if the kid could cover man, even though that's what he did in college. Can you at the pros? It's a different animal. The other thing is this: they were blitzing a lot more than they usually do. Mm-hmm. That, that that McDermott likes to. Um, that being said, when you blitz, you got you have it's not all the time, but ninety percent of the time you have to play man behind it. I think if they're able to get certain pieces up on that front and generate pressure with four or five, you could sign a Norman to play zone behind it, which helps your team. Now, is he completely dependent on um, is he is Norman completely dependent on uh, playing zone? He could play some man. I mean, he, he, he's he's a formidable corner. Uh, now we're just talking about an addition of a cornerback that has familiarity with uh, McDermott, and I understand that. If they don't sign him at all, or they don't even talk to him. Am I cool with that? I'm fine with that. I like Wallace. Wallace played phenomenal. Yeah. Um, but you can never replace experience like that. The experience that Norman has and the pedigree that he has going to a Super Bowl and playing in a Super Bowl and playing in the well, playoffs. And doing I mean, all let's that. not forget that Norman created quite the headache for Carolina. So, I mean, mm, yeah. the conversation could be had that he's not a culture fit because of the headache that he created in Carolina and demanding to be traded. Because they tagged him and he demanded to be traded. Yeah. And then that left that team in a lurch. They ended up just drafting a bunch of cornerbacks and they all had to start. Which is interesting enough because that first year, McDermott couldn't make it work mm-hmm. with all the corners that he had. Yeah. So what is the what is the X factor in Buffalo? Is Trey it White. Trey White or is it Leslie Frazier? I think it's Trey. I think Trey gives you so much versatility. I understand that. And to be, to be able to say, listen... Trey's playing man on this side and playing zone. You're going to play zone on the, on the, on the back side with, with Josh Norman. <clears throat> Offers your defense versatility. The quarterback can't read that. We've seen the Jets do that with the Rex Ryan years with Revis. They play 10 on 10. Yep. You man him number one all day. Yep. That's all, Your only job is to man him up. We're going to play 10 on 10 over here. Maybe some zone blitzes, some zone concepts, everything like that. That's what we're going to do. So... Well, let me ask you this. So, if you're looking at trading for um, Josh Norman, and there's the familiarity factor, right? Yeah. Why wouldn't you trade with Pittsburgh for Joe Hayden? It's going to cost about 10 mil this season. Pittsburgh's got to clean some cap. He's 31. So, he's got the same boat. I mean, Hayden can play man and zone still. Think of, think about that defense. you got Hayden on the right side. you got Trey on the left side. You go from playing ten on ten to playing nine on nine. I mean, you want to shut down the three run. years ago, Hayden. I would take. Really? I just think. Well, Norman doesn't have a lot of injury concerns, does he? Hayden does. Yeah. And does. the other thing is this, Hayden. Um. I just ever since he's left Cleveland, I think he's been very, very ineffective. Okay. Um. I, I mean, you never see. I mean, he's getting paid handsomely. Yeah. To not do very much. I mean, is that the product of the defense? I mean, good corners don't get thrown on. Other than A.J. Green, who in that division did he have to cover? Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, the toughest guys he has to cover is in practice every day. That's fair. (laughs) Yeah, that's fair. Um, I mean, I'm just saying that we're talking about veteran players who can come in and and take over that other I would understand it. I would, I would get un- it. I would understand it. Yeah. That you have now another rotational player that you can come in if if the the Patriots or the Jets happen to go four wide. That's what happens. Now you those. have a Levi Wallace. Now you have a yeah. Trey White, and you put Hayden on a corner. You put Teron Johnson. On well, and that's what happened with the Bills. It was real easy to spread them out because their depth at the position was just so thin. Yes. Once they lost to Ron Johnson, yeah. then they were just they were just trying to stay afloat yeah. at the position. Because we, we, we've highlighted many times about Micah Hyde. Mm-hmm. Poyer's better playing over the top. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what you got to do. you got to try to find another corner somewhere. Either you draft one. You know what? It's funny because I keep seeing all the draft. I know the Bills don't need one. Immediate. It's not the most immediate right. need on the team. Right. However, I keep seeing Gre- Greedy Williams yeah. getting drafted 11th, 12th. And so if he's there at 9, why not? Why not? 
I mean, it'd be interesting to see those card games with uh, Trey White from LSU, <laughs> Greedy Williams from LSU, and Levi Wallace from Alabama was, yeah. going back and forth. Be, each other. Be, 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 be. Oh, stop it. <laughs> It'd be like, uh, it'd be like uh, Leonis McKelvin. Post game? Speech therapy class. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Nine Gnome from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs>